Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing the Hoy Miles HM700 NT microinverter. This is a dual microinverter. Unlike the quad microinverter that I have reviewed in the past, this handles two panels coming into it, and we're gonna discuss different features about this microinverter and discuss a little bit about Hoy Miles and the company itself. But the main focus of this video is gonna be on this microinverter, the HM700 NT. And the HM series is actually Hoy Miles' most popular version in North America. And it comes in three different models, the HM600 NT, the HM700 NT, and the HM800 NT. And Hoy Miles offers a 25 year warranty on their microinverters. That is an industry leading warranty. Uh, something that's very important to point out because when you buy an inverter, whether it's a string inverter or a micro inverter, you want to make sure that you have a good warranty and Hoy Miles offers some of the best warranties in the whole industry at 25 years on their micro inverter. And for everybody that hasn't heard of Hoy Miles before, they are a major player in the micro inverter segment of the solar industry. They actually have other products that you can purchase from them as well but I'm focusing more on the microinverters in this video today. This manufacturer is a top tier manufacturer. And whether you need a quad microinverter, a dual microinverter, or a single microinverter, Hoy Miles will have their microinverter that's right for you. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the specs on the HM700 NT. And something that a lot of people don't talk about is to understand how many of these you can actually put on one string or one branch going to your combiner box. And if you're using 12 gauge wire, you could put six of these on one branch, meaning you can have 12 solar panels and six of these on one circuit. Now, if you're using 10 gauge wire, which I would recommend, you would be putting up to a maximum of eight of these in one circuit or one branch that goes to your binder box, meaning you could have 16 solar panels and eight of these microinverters on one circuit. The max amps on this microinverter is 2.9 amps. We're gonna get a closer look at this right here and talk about some of the numbers. Here we have the manufacturer, the model number, and all the information that you'll need if you're designing your own system. An important number is right here, your peak conversion efficiency. That is 96.7%. And this is a 240 volt microinverter running at 2.9 amps maximum. And another important number is your max continuous output. See that is 696. And what that 696 watts mean is that's the max peak continuous power that that microinverter can actually produce at. So if you had two panels producing at 350 watts each, this would almost be able to match that at 100%. So if we're talking about 410, 420 watt panels producing around 350 watts, this would be a perfect pairing for that. Now, if you have larger panels and you're looking for something that could produce more, you may wanna step up to the 800 series or even go in to the quad microinverter that could do the 2000 watts. And I have a whole different video on this one. You may wanna go check it out. I'll leave a link in it up here that you could check this one out. But if you're using big panels, like 600 watt panels, this would be the one you would wanna use. Now don't make the error of oversizing your microinverter. This microinverter is actually commonly paired with 280 watts all the way up to over 470 watts per panel. Now let's talk about how the microinverter communicates to the cloud and sends that data for your solar array. We have a 2.4 gigahertz antenna that communicates with your DTU. The DTU sends that data to the cloud and then you're able to view that in real time through the Hoy Miles app. And all that the DTU stands for is data transfer unit. And the true way of the microinverter is only six pounds. And to get a measurement, we wanna measure from here to here, and then from there to there. And I'm gonna go like this. So that's nine and seven eighths by nine and 15 sixteenths. This is almost a perfect square. That's not counting the communication antenna, and we'll go ahead and add that one in. So let's say 11 and five sixteenths from here to here. And if we were going to include the wires, 
for an install if you're in a tight spot or something then I would probably add another two inches on each side and say that you're gonna need 14 inches of clearance at bare minimum. And on the depth, we are right at one and one eighth of an inch. To install this, this silver points toward the sun. So your rocking system would be coming here. You would lay this down like this. So this would point toward the back side of your solar panels. The black side of this would actually point down toward your roof or toward the ground. So that would be the proper way of installing the microinverter. And some accessories that you're gonna need is this trunk cable. And I would also get these disconnect tools. The way that this works is on the bottom side of this, you have four little ports that you basically push this in, give it a good push and you disconnect this. If you have another connection to make, you just remove this cap, you bring your wire in, and then you make your torque connection right here, and then you'll tighten this back down for a watertight fitting, which I really love the way that these truck cables are actually designed. And then once you're complete with that, you'll put this back on to be able to connect your microinverter to it. This has a cap on it because let's say that it was the end of our string and we didn't want a microinverter connected to this one, then we don't have to have that. We can just put that cap on for a watertight fitting. But if we want to remove it, it's very simple. You just press that in, pull that up, and then connect your microinverter to it. And the way that we're gonna do that is just push it in, give it a snap. Now your microinverter is connected and that was Really, I mean, that was as simple as it comes. I really love that these trunk cables are designed the way they are. I love this design. And then let's say if you wanna take this microinverter off of the string, you just push this in and disconnect it. It's that simple. This is a really good design. And I'm gonna end this video with compatibility because it's very important to understand not every microinverter is compatible with every solar panel. However, with the Hoy Miles microinverter, I have yet to find a solar panel that this was not compatible with working with. Now, it's a whole different conversation to say what's the proper pairing, but is it compatible? Will it work with that solar panel? I have yet to find a manufacturer, say like uh, Canadian Solar or First Solar. Some of those panels don't work with other microinverters that you may have heard of. This one is very compatible. I have yet to find a solar panel that it's not compatible with. That's very important when you start going to build out your system. Thank you for hanging out with me to the end of the video. If you found this helpful in any way, be sure to smash the thumbs up button. It really does help me out a lot. Leave me a comment below if you've heard of Hoy Miles or if you're even considering maybe building a system with Hoy Miles microinverters yourself, I would love to hear from you. And don't forget to head over to DIYSolarBills.com and register to be part of that community for free. Again, I wanna thank you for watching the video and I hope to catch you in my next one.